Hi, once again, thank you for joining us for our live webinar on how to trade NASDAQ stock index futures. Once again, this is Eric Lee. I am an account manager with Philip Futures. In today's webinar, we will be discussing briefly on how futures work, in particular on trading NASDAQ stock index futures. Before we begin, I would like to do a sound check. If you can hear me loud and clear, just type yes into the question box. Also, during the webinar, if you have any questions, do type them into the question box and I will address them during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Great, looks like everyone can hear me clearly. So let's begin tonight's webinar. Just want to highlight the examples shown here are for educational purpose only. It should not be taken as a recommendation to buy or sell. If you like to, you can discuss further with me after the webinar on the suitability of the investment products, taking into consideration your specific investment objectives and financial needs. As introduced, my name is Eric Lee, an account manager with Philip Futures. Philip Futures is part of the Philip Capital Group, to which there are other subsidiaries, most famously Philip Securities, with its well-known Poems trading platform. In fact, there are numerous times whereby my clients refer to our company as Poems and thought that my name is Eric Philip. Now, since I joined Philip in 2004 as a remiser, or some of, some of you may refer to as a stockbroker, I also took up license in futures and forex trading in 2006. Subsequently, and I also take up a financial advisory license to manage other financial products such as unit trust, managed accounts, and advisory wrap accounts. Over the years, I find that my understanding into these various financial instruments made me a better trader and investor, thus also allowing me to advise my clients holistically. In this short hour that we have together, it is not possible for me to tell you everything about futures, NASDAQ, or even trading. I would like to spend more time on topics I think matter the most, at least to me, as well as on researches I had done. I will cover briefly on how futures work. Other topics that are not covered today, you can refer to them on our pro product info sheet that we have created for you. If you would like to receive them, Please help by filling up the online survey form and indicate that you would like to receive the notes and slides, and we will send them to you the following day. So let's get started, shall we? First off, what is futures? Futures contracts allow traders to lock in to a price of the underlying asset or commodity. These contracts have expiration dates and set prices that are known upfront. Futures are identified by their expiration month. For example, a December NASDAQ futures contract expires in de December. The term futures tend to represent the overall market. However, there are many types of futures contracts, contracts available for trading. We have hard commodities like gold, soft commodities like coffee, and financial assets like currencies and stock index futures. Futures can be used to hedge the price movement of the underlying asset. Here, the goal is to prevent losses from potentially unfav unfavorable price change rather than to speculate. Many companies that enter into hedges are using or producing the underlying assets. For example, St Starbucks can use futures to lock in to a specific price for buying their coffee supply. By doing so, they reduce their risk and guarantee they will receive the fixed price. If the price of coffee increased, Starbucks will have a gain on the hedge. 
as they were able to lock into the commodity at a lower price. However, to them, it really doesn't matter whether the prices goes up or not, because their main purpose is not to speculate. Their main purpose is to have stability in price, uncertainty in price, certainty in delivery. Investors holding on to a portfolio of stocks can also choose to hedge their portfolio by selling stock index futures. Like during certain market events, for example, like what we have just went through last year, early last year, beginning of last year, when the coronavirus pandemic first struck, right? If the investor at that point in time feels that they will have a detrimental effect to their portfolio, and yet they do not want to sell them all due to uh, some um, reasons like the, uh, they wanting to receive the dividends or they wanting to maintain a certain percentage of shareholdings. Thus, they can then do their hedge via instruments like the futures index. A futures contract allows traders to speculate on the direction movement of a commodity price. In essence, it is to try to buy low and sell high and vice versa, to sell high and buy low. The most recognized benefit of futures trading is that it allows trader to speculate the market by buying and selling at ease. If you think that the stock market is too high right now, you can choose to sell it first. And if your theory proves to be correct, you buy it back later at a lower price. Take for example here, back in January 2020, before the world caught wind of the COVID-19 crisis, crude oil price had actually broken below its trendline support on the 22nd of January. It was trading above 60 then, as if after it broke the support, the price came down. Traders who have shorted crude oil then, they could have done it based on technical analysis like what I've shown you, a simple breaking breaking of support level, major support level like the trend line. Or they could have realized about the seriousness of the crisis and the impact it will have on the commodity. And thus they short sell first. So when the theory proved to be correct, as what we have seen on high side right now. So what happened then was that we see the biggest sell down in crude price you know, over the past recent history. You know, it went up so low that even we have some contract months, we see some contract months whereby it's set at a negative net value. Using futures also allows traders to place a bet on the global macro move. As compared to stock investing, traders need not study or analyze the income statements and balance sheets of individual companies or to try to determine the future growth prospect of the companies before investing in them. Right? But, but most people, when we read the news, we have a broad idea of how certain government's action will impact the economy or how certain events, macro events, will cause the market to move in a way. Right? And we can make use of this knowledge, this common knowledge that we have, and to place it into a speculative bet in the market by trading on the futures products. Take for example here, let's look at this news article. On the 3rd of March, 2020, the Fed Federal Reserve cuts interest rate by half a percentage. What do you think will be the impact to the market? How about this news here? No, this happened just for, for context, this happened after we see a strong um, market sell down in February and March due to um, the COVID-19 crisis. So how about this news here? 12 days after the first news was out, on the 15th of March, 2020, the Fed cuts the rates again, and this time they cut it to zero and launches a massive 700 billion quantitative easing program so quantitative easing, quantitative easing means that they are going to print and pump more money into the US economy. The money supply will increase 
and it's going to be very cheap for businesses and individuals to take up loan. What do you think will happen to the stock market? And what do you think will happen to the US dollar when this, after these two news is out? Let's take a poll here. How many of you think that the US dollar will strengthen? And how many of you think that the US dollar will weaken after these news are out? Please click strengthen or weaken. Okay, let's just give it another couple of seconds. Polls are coming in. Okay, okay, we shall close the poll now and view the result. Okay, it almost 85% of you voted that the US dollar will weaken and 15% voted that it will strengthen. So now let's look at what happened, actually. Well, this is, this is history, okay? It has really happened, All right? So this is the weekly chart on the US dollar index. Okay, the US dollar index is a measure of the value of the US dollar relative to the value of a basket of currencies of the US major trading partners. So, after this, both of the piece of news are out. Okay, we can see that firstly, the Fed fund rate represented by the orange line dropped to almost zero. Remember the news, it says that on the second news, it says that the Fed is going to reduce it right to almost zero, right? And the rate of change in the money supply represented by the purple line is shot up dramatically, uh, drastically, right? And this is caused by the QE, the quantitative easing, right? By the Fed printing out more money, does the money supply shut up? So those of you who have selected that the US dollar will weaken, could put your you, you could have put your theory to the test back in March. You know, you read the piece of news, you formed that idea, you know that the money supply will increase, and you know that that will cause the US dollar to weaken. So if you have put that into practice, if you have shorted instrument like this, the dollar index, or you have shorted, um, traded any currency that is paired to US dollar, right, and shorted the USD directly or indirectly, right, you would have benefited from this move due to the actions of the Federal Reserve. So after learning about some of the benefits of futures trading, that you think that, yeah, you agree that Okay, futures is one good instrument that I can use to trade or uh, to, to place a bet on the macro move. But there is no really, really no lack of futures products out there to choose from to trade. So why do we choose to trade NASDAQ futures? Okay, the stock index futures is a good consideration to trade in as most of us are familiar with stock market, right? The products that we use of like when we attended classes like this, you have, a, you have a computer that runs on Microsoft Windows. You use Google to search for information. So you, use a, you probably are using an iPhone or an Apple product right now. So, so stock market is something that is very familiar to all of us. The, the products and services are very much into our, our everyday life. So it's easier for us to understand how it moves and why it moves. So among the world's stock indices, United States has the largest market cap, taking up 55% of the world's market cap. Thus, its movement is more likely to impact the other markets than the other way around. Right? In finance, we have this saying, when the US sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. There are three widely followed stock indexes to which we can choose to trade the US futures with. They are the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the NASDAQ 100. This chart shows clearly why I prefer NASDAQ. 
over the same period from 2009 till now, NASDAQ stock index has risen two times more than Dow Jones and S&P. So as a trader, we ask ourselves this, given the same holding period, one index rises 20% and the other rises 10%, which would you rather be buying? Of course, we will rather be buying the one that rises the most because the same period of time, we can capture the most profit. And if you have selected the NASDAQ futures to trade in, there are basically two futures products that we can choose to trade the NASDAQ index. We have the e-mini NASDAQ and the micro e-mini NASDAQ futures. Okay, the main difference between the two is that the e-mini NASDAQ is 10 times the size of the micro NASDAQ. Thus, depending on your account size and your risk preference, you can choose to I either of the two or a combination of both to meet your trading objectives. So say for example, your account size, you feel that allows you to be able to trade up to 1.5 lots um, on the, on the e-mini NASDAQ, but you can't trade 0.5 lots of e-mini NASDAQ. So what you can do is you can trade one lot of e-mini and five lots of the micro NASDAQ. So that together will form a 1.5 e-mini. So lastly, on the topic of how futures work, I would like to use the e-mini NASDAQ futures as an example to understand how we calculate its profit and loss and also understand about its contract specification. Okay, contract size of a futures is the standardized amount that tells the buyers and sellers the exact quantities that are being bought or sold based on the terms of the contract. So for micro e-mini NASDAQ, this is two US dollar per index point multiplied by the index points traded. Thus, if NASDAQ is trading at 12,300 points, its contract size will be $2 multiplied by 12,300 index points, which equal to US 24,600. What this means is that if this is a stock investment that you are paying yeah, you bought and you need to pay up in full. This is the gross amount that you will have to pay up. But futures is traded on leverage. It is not required for you and I to pay the full contract size. What is needed to start this position is an initial margin of US 1,870 per contract of the micro e-mini NASDAQ futures, thus giving us the ability to leverage up to 13 times. Of course, please note that this initial margin of 1,870 will change over time. The exchange is the one that will be deciding on how they want to set the, the initial margin at. And they do that by the volatility in the market as well as on the overall contract size. So basically, the larger the, the, the index goes, over time, they will need to adjust the initial margin upwards. Of course, some of you who have traded stocks before will tell me that we can also trade stocks on leverage by using margin or CFD account. However, such accounts charges us a finance fee for using their leverage facility. Futures products does not require any payment of finance, financing fee. Right? That's just how the the, the product is set up. So futures is widely considered as the most cost effective leverage in financial instrument to trade in. How then do we calculate the PNL? For micro e-mini NASDAQ, we use the same formula. As well, which is $2 2 US dollar multiplied by the index points gained or lost. If you bought the futures at 12,300 and subsequently sold it at 12,500, your gross profit will be 200 points, right? 12,500 minus 12,300. 200 points 
multiply by US $2. So this will equal to US $400 per contract. So if you were to bought, if you were to buy two lots of micro NASDAQ, that will be equal to US $400 times two, which equals to US 800, so on and so forth, depending on how many lots that you buy and sell. I hope that I've covered sufficiently to give you an idea of how futures work, in particular, the NASDAQ futures. As mentioned, we have some reading materials for you. At the end of the webinar, you can fill up our feedback form and indicate there that you would like to receive the product info sheet and the webinar slides, and we will be able to email them to you so as to help you to understand the product further. Okay, at this point, I wish to move on to a more interesting topic of today, which is finding the key to success as a trader. In our daily work, we are, there are many metrics used to measure competency or successes, big and small. Right? If you go to work in our company, that's what our bosses will go to will, will, will measure us, our performance, our KPI. In school, measured by the projects, by the tests, by the work, well, the, all the works that uh, is given to us. So, but as a trader, what our measurement of success is more straightforward. Right? There's only one thing we are in at the end of the day, which is the profit and loss. So we are also being measured ourselves at the by, by measuring the size of our trading account. So what we want to achieve at the end of the day is to see the equity growing more and more every single month or every single year. Of course, we will not possible, we, we will not be winning on every single trade. And that's just not possible. But there are tools that we can use, methods that we can adhere to that if we were to work hard and smart, we know that at the end of the day, we can be successful in trading because these tools will be able to guide and help us in achieving the success. Have you ever heard of this term saying, the house always wins? To be a successful trader, we must think like a casino, not as a patron to the casino. See, a casino is not a game, it is a business. Every single game that the casino added to, uh, to, their, uh, add to the casino, the owners add to the casino, are designed to give the house an edge. Nothing is left for chances. No matter what game we choose to play when we go into the casinos, the odds of the casino winning our money are greater than the odds of us winning the casino's money. Take for example here, having a zero on a Rolex wheel gives casino an extra edge of 2.7 times, 2.7% a bear pattern. The percentage is not high, but over time, as they run this machine again and again, the casino will win. Some casinos, even uses roulette wheel with a double zero. This means that apart from the single zero you see, there's another slot with a double zero. This gift then give the casino, this then gives the casino a higher edge of 5.26%. So if you really have an urge to play roulette, at least visit a casino which offer a single zero roulette wheel. In that, we have um, sort of um, enter to the edge that is slightly more in favor to us. But overall, at the end of the day, the house still has a better edge. So now if I tell you one thing you can do to give you an edge in trading the NASDAQ index or any other stock index futures you wish to trade in, Will you be keen to know about it? If you are keen, 
type yes in the question box. Here we go. The one thing all of us just need to do to give us an additional edge in the trading in, in trading the Nasdaq index is that we only buy, do not short sell. Right? And your trading result will improve. Okay, look at this table here. Since 2009 until now, there are total 141 months. 65% of the 65% of the months, the US stock market went up and closed higher than the start of the month. So meaning that on the first of the month, you open low. On the 30th or 31st of the month, it closes higher. And not just that, 50% of these months, the market closed at an all-time high level, not just higher than the start of the month, not just higher than the previous month but it closes at the highest level ever. Half of the time, it does that. So all, you, all we ever did, if we were to stop looking for reason to short sell the market, we only buy when there's a signal to do so, we will improve our odds of succeeding in trading the US stock index futures. You know, I'm not saying to blindly buy no matter what, because it did drop 35% of the months. And some of the drop can be so drastic and fast that it caused real damage to our trading to the trading account, especially if the leverage use is too high. We need to trade smart. As such, I would like to introduce some tools to you to help you gauge the strength of the long-term and short-term trend of the market. The first tool which helps us measure the long-term strength of the market is housing starts. Okay, the term housing starts refer to the number of new residential construction projects that begin during any particular month. As such, it is a key economic indicator. Housing start statistics are released on or around the 17th of each month by the US Commerce Department. A housing start is counted when construction begins on the footings or foundation of the residential structure. So it's not concept, right? The work is actually physically, physically being done. Money is being spent on, right? Raw materials being purchased. So thus, in a strong economy, people are more likely to purchase new homes. Conversely, people are less likely to buy new homes in a weak economy. This is what makes the housing starts a critical indicator on the broad economic strength. How then can we use this in economic indicator in our stock trading? In the 1990s, we had a rolling bull market due to the emergence of te many technology stocks. What do you think was the housing starts performing? when the stock market was in the bull run then? You can type in the question box, do you think the market is going up or down? Okay. Uh, sorry, not the bull market, not the market, the uh, housing starts going up or down. If you type the housing starts down, then give yourself a pat on the shoulder because you probably have studied about this, uh, uh, about what happened then, right? So despite the stock market breaking new high, despite the stock market breaking new high, housing starts was painting a very different picture as can be seen on the red arrow here, right? The stock market was going up, but housing starts was coming down. So what followed was a historical event famously known as the dot-com bubble, right? The next example here is probably still fresh in our memory. The events leading to the great financial crisis in 2008 was sparked off by the US subprime problem. 
From 2006 to 2007, the stock market continued to break new high. It's a bull market. All the investors, all the traders are celebrating. But look at the housing stocks. Housing stocks kept trending downwards. When the stock market peaked in October 2007, the housing stocks even went down to level not seen since 1993. It then continued to trend downwards together with the stock market crash. It only started recovering in 2011, or 2011 onwards. I would like to take another poll here. The stock market has recovered a great deal since it bottomed in March last year. Many stock indices are trading at all-time high level now, in the, while we are still in the midst of the pandemic. What do you think is the housing start numbers now? Is the housing starts trending upwards or downwards? Please click upward or downward on the poll. Okay, the housing starts trending upwards or downwards. Just giving a couple more seconds for, for people to select. Okay. Okay, I'm going closing the poll now. 57% selected downward. 43% chose uptrend, meaning that during uh, this 2020, you think that the US housing starts is going down. 43% think so, 57% thinks that the uh, uh, 57 thinks that it's going down, 43% thinks that it's going up. Okay, let's view the result now. Surprise, surprise, you know, with all the bad news that we are reading about the economy, about people losing jobs, about uh, so many cases, brand or all-time all high uh, COVID cases uh, every day. Housing start share is painting a different picture here. The Americans are buying and building more houses. The black line, the black line there you see here is the S and P 500. The orange line you see is the housing starts. So it does, it did bottom crashed out dramatically during the crisis, right? Because a lot of uncertainties, people stopped building, people stopped buying new houses, right? But what happened in March? We read, we saw in the early part of this seminar, the Fed comes in, print more money, right? Lower the interest rate. So the housing starts then start improving. Of course, one can say that it's because of the Fed's action of reducing interest rate to zero, and the printing of more money that makes the mortgage rate so attractive. Therefore, the housing starts has improved. It doesn't mean that the economy is strong. But think about this. If I am worried about my job, you know, if there's a real danger that I may not have an income the next few months, will I buy a new house even when the mortgage rate is low now? I wouldn't, right? I must have certain assurance or certainty that I have the money you know, that is able to uh, back me through. And this is not a, a rush decision, right? Because buying a house is a multi-year investment. So this is how we can make use of the housing start data and trend to have a gauge of a long-term strength on the US stock market. So now let's look at an indicator for measuring the short-term strength of the stock market. The advanced decline line, or in short, we call it the AD line, is a market breadth indicator used to show how many stocks are participating in the stock market rally or stock market decline. The formula here uh, are shown here. Where major indexes are rallying, a rising AD line confirms the uptrend, showing strong participation, meaning that when the index is going up, there are more stocks that are gaining, more stocks are closing at higher price than those that is closing at lower price. So that's the AD line going up. It confirms the, the strength in the, in the index. 
if a major index are rallying, but we see that the AD line is falling, meaning that only a selected, selected few stocks are, are moving up, but majority of the markets are coming down. This shows that fewer stocks are participating in the rally, which means, which means that the index could be nearing the end of its rally, the short-term rally. The chart here shows the S&P 500 index daily chart in October 2018. Okay, it is the S&P versus the AD line. Okay, we see here the market traded higher, market as in the candlesticks shown here, breaking new high. But the advanced decline line, as shown by the purple line, fails to trend higher. It did not break new high. And subsequently, as the stock market broke down, it support the AD the line comes down as well. And after that, what we witness is that the stock market dropping 20% within two and a half months. So this is something different. Unlike the housing stocks I've shown you, it is not a long-term trend that we're looking at, but, but something more short-term. Okay, so the impact to it is short term as well. The next chart here is more recent example. It shows the S&P 500 index daily chart in September 2020, just like three or four months uh, ago. We see here that the market trade higher, but what happened to the advanced decline line? It failed to trend higher right, it form a lower high. What happened then? The market dropped 10% over the next three weeks. So whether it's the housing starts or advanced decline line, these are not the be all and all indicators. We don't just use it, you know, and then just uh, think that it will definitely happen, right? Yeah, there are indicators that tell us some things. There are other indicators that we can use to, to support it, to give us more confidence right, on the analysis. Right? But there are good indicators that we can use to help us understand the market better, whether is it a long-term trend or a short-term trend. The next indicator I would like to introduce to you is proprietary. It's something that I use to um, alert my clients who subscribe to my WhatsApp services whenever I spot opportunities to trade the market based on this index. And this is the, I, this is what I call the FANG PV index. FANG, F-A-A-N-G, is an acronym used to represent the five tech giants. They are not only the market leaders in their industries, but they are also the stock market leader. Right, leading the stock market in this bull run, or in at times also leading the stock market in this bear run. One of the first lessons I learned in trading is to follow the leader. In February this year, uh, sorry, in February last year, 2020, after the world was introduced to the coronavirus, the stock markets all over the world crashed spectacularly with the S&P 500 leading the charge, dropping 35% from peak to dot bottom within two months. What's interesting here is that halfway through the drop, we see the FANG PV index represented by the golden line falling halfway through and it just flat line, did not follow the market in dropping down further. Then on the 7th of April, it broke its short-term resistance level, which gave us a signal of a start of an uptrend. So what followed, of course, is history, right? Market has gone up ever since then without uh, major uh, corrections. Remember the example I showed earlier on how advanced decline line signal market peak three months back in September? Yep, 
Okay, then what follow is that the market dropped 10%. Over here, the FANG PV index gave me the confidence that this drop is not going to be heavy. As the index steady and did not drop further. Then on the 22nd of September, it gave me the signal of an uptrend continuation as the, in, as the index broke above its short-term resistance. My clients get to subscribe to my WhatsApp services free of charge. So this is an example of a alert that I sent to some of my clients. So before I end, I would like to quickly run through some of the recent messages that I sent out. Because from these messages, from these past examples, I can also share with you my thought process how it's on how I look up for trading opportunities for this for various markets. This is a Thanksgiving seasonal trade sent on the 19th of November. The seasonal trades is one strategy that I use to look out for recurring patterns in the market, right? There are, there are certain patterns that you do not know the reason why, but it just keep happening and happening again. So we just take it that making the assumption that the history repeats itself and we try to formulate a strategy out of it. So what I did is that I back test on the strategy and it had a 95% winning percentage. The entry and the exit rules are indicated on the message shown here. This is the result of the, those clients of mine who followed the trade, right? They bought at a close on 19th of November at 35, at 3,580, and so on the 1st of December at 3,616. That's about US $4,000 per profit per lot of E-mini S&P. So for those clients who trade on the micro S&P, that the profit will be 400 per lot. The next WhatsApp, on the 3rd of November, after the S&P 500 had corrected from 3,5541 to a low of 3,225, I sent out this WhatsApp message to my clients that both the advanced decline line and the FANG PV index are still pointing to bullish strength in the market. Thus, they could look out for signals to buy the US stock index futures. So this is what happened here. We see that the stock market as represented by the S&P 500 has fallen, but the AD line is still uptrend. AD line is still uptrend and the FANG PV index is still uptrend. Yeah, I went through this example just now. So just to quickly show you that this is also one of the message I sent to my client on the 22nd of September. Okay, this is what we have went through. The E-mini NASDAQ corrected 14% in three weeks. The FANG PV index showing market strength. The market then rebounded and continued on its uptrend. On the 14th of October, I alerted my clients about the New Zealand USD currency pairs holding its uptrend well, and the market correction then can be used as an opportunity to buy on anticipation of an uptrend continuation. Okay, this is what happened. The green dotted line you've seen here is a point that the message is being sent out. Nothing fantastic, nothing um, difficult is used here. It's just a simple trend line together with a KST indicator, right? For those of you who are in Joaquin, KST indicator um, operates quite similar to the MACD, but uh, it is just more uh, long, longer term longer term in trend, uh, and it takes slightly longer for it to turn. Thus, it's pretty good in capturing um, a long-term, slightly long-term trend. 
So if you are a trend trader, it's a good indicator to consider using. Okay, these are my value added service for my clients. One on one coaching is currently provided via Zoom or WhatsApp call uh, as part of our measure to combat COVID. Right? But um, after the whole COVID situation is over, well, I'm, I'll be very glad to meet up with you if you are keen to do so, to, if you want to find out more about uh, futures or even stock trading. Okay, please find my contact details here. Uh, my linking address is found here. You can go and add me in. Sometimes I will post up some of my views uh, on the linking. Um, not as active here as compared to my WhatsApp messages sent to my clients, uh, but there are, uh, once in a while I do uh, upload something there. And uh, this QR code, if you are keen to um, sign up for the one-to-one -one coaching, you can scan this QR code, uh, uh, QR code and fill up the form. Okay, um, now is the time I want to open up for Q&A. Um, let me look through the question posted. Okay, um, from Yuan Tak, you ask, is fewest trading a zero sum game? Uh, yes. In a sense, futures trading is a zero sum game because um, futures has an expiry, right? It trades um, for, in this instance, for the NASDAQ or any of the US stock index futures, it trades on a quarterly basis. So um, it trades in March, June, September, and December month. So at the end of the contract, the contract will expire and you will have to be um, set it off, right? Uh, whether you're holding on to a long or short position, you need to be closed off. So if the if the index were to go up, you hold a long position, you'll be set at a profit. You if you are uh, holding on to a, a, a short position and you close up, then you are being set at a loss. Okay, so that's the mechanic of the futures index. But does the does it being a, a zero sum game affect our trading or investing? Uh, I do not think so, right? Because if you were to look at this in a, if you, okay, generally no, nobody I know of actually uses futures for long-term investing. But uh, in effect, if you want to, you can do so. Meaning that you buy the S&P 500 and then you just keep rolling over every three months, like, that now you were to buy the March uh, 2021, by the end of uh, middle of March, you will sell the March contract and then you continue buying the June contract and you keep doing that rolling over. So in that essence, is the futures a zero sum game to you, right? It is not, right? Because you are participating in a long-term bull market uh, uh, on the index, right? Because you all know that the stock index in the long term, it goes up, right? Due to companies, uh, uh, growing, making more profits, selling more products. Uh, companies are uh, digging up more commodities, producing more uh, uh, products to sell. So, so thus, then, uh, in that is essence, it is not a uh, uh, zero sum game. Okay, uh, so to answer Paul, E mini S and P, it can be traded on the Philip Nova platform. Uh, okay, to answer Paul again, uh, he asked, I think you are trying to ask whether can you buy the uh, e-mini S&P on, uh, on the mobile app of Nova and then you sell it on the desktop of Nova. Uh, okay, if that's your question, then the answer is no, you, you can't, right? Uh, because it is recognized as per account basis. So you cannot leave it open, uh, both positions open. Uh, at a long and a short, right? But if that's not your question, please um, uh, let me know again. So, however, 
uh, you can do what some people call a calendar spread, meaning that you were long uh, March and you short June, right? And that is possible because these two months, even though it's the same product, same uh, index, they are considered as a different contract. So you can do that, right, if you want. Um, um, but provided that strategy makes sense to you, uh, that you uh, otherwise, um, yeah. Okay, otherwise, um, if you are talking about the same month, contract month, no, you cannot hold both long and short at the same time. Okay, Hui Pian asks, what is my view on the sell-off on the US market yesterday? Well, okay, of course, the US market has been going up for quite some time. So um, correction is always expected. Um, but personally, okay, this is my personal view. I think that uh, 2021 is still gonna close out bullish, meaning that we're gonna see uh, by December uh, 30th or, or December 30, 31st uh, this year, uh, the, the index closing at a higher price. Um, but in between, of course, there's going to be corrections. And some of these corrections could be like, um, heavy, like um, 10, between 10 to 20%. Uh, will we see another market sell-off like what we saw on the on February, March uh, last year? Uh, I don't think so, right? Because the Fed has already committed uh, to keep the interest rate low, you know, and they are printing money, and uh, they'll probably print more money if what they are doing is not working. Um, and so the market has this, um, um, expectation of the Fed doing that, right? And why does that impact the market? Because if you think about it, when there are more money out there, and this money needs to go somewhere, this money needs to be invested. So what other assets can you think of that provides good yield other than the stock, other than stock index or other than the individual stocks? Do, do you buy into bonds? You no, know, with the interest rate at zero, uh, some countries are uh, even in negative interest rate. Uh, is bond a, a good investment? Mm, no, right? How about commodities? Uh, commodities may, may go up, right? Because of low interest rate, um, when the economy finally recover, right? Um, um, some inflation may come in, but commodities doesn't yield anything, right? And most of the, most money, um, actually goes into assets that will yield us some return, like bonds, like REITs, like stocks, or even property, because you can, you can buy and rent out, right? So, so by far, stocks is still the most preferred assets to invest in, right? So therefore, I believe that um, the stock market will still continue to do well uh, because of the uh, um, of influx of cash, and um, now, of course, as we exit the um, COVID uh, progressively due to the um, uh, distribution of the vaccine, so very likely the market will move towards more normalcy. Okay, Su Wing asks, what's the difference between futures and options trading? Um, okay. Options is really a different, um, different products. Um, personally, I prefer futures for speculation because it's more straightforward, right? So what you're trying to do is just to buy low, sell high. And uh, of course, also to sell high, buy low. But options, there are many other things that you need to uh, bear in mind, uh, like the time decay, and usually people use options for uh, certain strategies that they want to apply. And um, I must say, I'm not very familiar. Uh, I, personally, I do not use uh, options at all. And I, um, so unless you know what you're doing, otherwise I would really suggest uh, not to dabble into options, right? But to stick into more uh, vanilla types of investment products like futures or stocks. Okay, um, so Min asks, e-mini futures, every three months rollover need to do manually 
or is it auto? Okay, you need to roll over manually yourself, right? There's no auto roll over. So meaning that at the end of the contract, uh, let's say um, the uh, middle of March, uh, when the March contract is expiring, you need to sell the March contract yourself and buy the June contract. That is to say, if you, uh, let, for example, if you're holding a long position and you want to roll over, that's what you need to do, right? Uh, if you do not, what happens if you do not uh, sell off your March contracts, right? You will be cash settled, right? The exchange will close it off, will settle them. And then uh, based on the settlement price, you will calculate a p and I, I must uh, give a warning here that I do not suggest leaving it for cash settled because cash settlement is not as what most of us think. Most of us uh, think that cash settlement is based on the last day closing price. On the last day, uh, whatever the market closed at, that is the price that is being set at. But that is not true, right? Because the exchange is stated there on their contract specs, they do have some formulas of calculation. It's generally an average price, right? That is being uh, used to calculate the actual settlement price. So on the last day, assuming you have a rolling bull market and it closes at an all time high, uh, you, if you leave it to cash settle, you actually do not profit right, from this last day of movement because it's going to use a series of, uh, of prices in the middle to average up. Okay, my QR code is here. If you want to, uh, my contacts, my linking, uh, you, can, uh, you can do a screenshot. Okay, Chris asks, what is the commission charged? Um, for, okay, currently we, for the trading, oh, I did not show it here, but um, sorry, uh, for the trading of the uh, micro uh, contracts, we have a promotion going on. So uh, after you open the account, uh, if you want to enjoy the promotional rate, uh, it is shown on the first, uh, I think on the first slide, uh, the QR code. Uh, later, I will flash it over here. Assume that you are done with this context. Yeah, yeah you can. Um, oops, sorry. Okay, you can uh, scan the QR codes on this promotion, and then you can then find the uh, promotion uh, rates for the micro e mini. Um, uh, futures products. Okay, I think um, that is all for today. If you have no other questions, okay. Um, thank you very much for being such a wonderful audience for tonight's webinar. But a link to the recording to of this webinar will be made available in our follow up email tomorrow. If you have any query on the webinar or you would like to get started. Simply reply to our email and we will get in touch with you. Um, this is Eric Lee here signing off, wishing you a prosperous and successful 2021.